welcome back to Teach Talk with the Fine Arts. My name is Sarah and I'm your host. First off, Happy New Year. I hope you guys had a great holiday season and I hope you're all staying safe and healthy. I took some time off for the holidays and so that I can rest and recharge. I'm sure y'all understand. I don't know if y'all even noticed, but <laughs> we're back now. Also, I'm switching this podcast to a bi-weekly schedule upload. So instead of every week, because I was getting burnt out with everything else that I have to do. I want to continue this podcast and I want to enjoy it. So switching it to bi-weekly gives me more time to plan and edit and upload and all the things without stressing myself out too much. Okay, I think that's all the announcements I have to say. So for the episode, this is my friend Matt Lamoth. Uh, we went to college together. He talks about it more in the episode when he introduces himself. For this podcast episode, I wanted to get the perspective of someone that went through college that did music, but that was not a music major like myself. So we talk about that. We talk about a musical that we did in college. I do want to say that in this episode, I talk about it being hard and that it kind of felt like an unpaid job at times. And I am not meaning that in a bad way. It was my major, so it was supposed to feel that way. I'm very thankful for my music education and all the people that helped me throughout my music education. And I would never see anything to discredit that or anything. I'm very proud of it. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. Hey, Matt, you want to introduce yourself? Hi guys, uh, I'm Matthew Lamoth. Uh, I am a geology graduate major from Concord University. Uh, I actually graduated with Sarah here from Concord. Uh, so we've known each other for quite a few years now and it's been a pleasure. Yay! You've been playing <laughs> Pokemon a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Had to bring Pokemon into this. Got to nerd out a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> so currently what is your main gig did it freeze again there we go okay okay cool <laughs> <laughs> so good sorry signal's being a little wonky so it kind of froze for a second yeah that's okay my my internet's weird here too so like, i need to fix it <laughs> if i want to keep doing this i need to get better internet <laughs> <laughs> okay so like what's your main gig what's your job what do you do uh right now i'm currently a cook at a local restaurant uh i'm one of the people main people in charge there uh so i do a little bit of everything from cooking to cleaning to actually being the customer service with a smile out front um so waiter waitress type deal gig out there um yeah it keeps me pretty busy uh while well, i continue to lo uh, look for job in my field so you know pays the bills helps with that so <laughs> that's, what, that's all you gotta ask for i hear that my outline here kind of involves teaching and during covid so we're kind of going to kind of go off that a little bit as you're not teaching during covid <laughs> <laughs> So, I kind of wanted to focus on someone that did co did music in college, but not as a major. So, kind of give a brief overview of, like, what you did in college with music and why you chose to continue in college. Well, so, what I did, Sarah, with music in college is uh, I basically stuck with uh, your typical just generic marching and concert bands. Uh, I didn't really do anything outside of that, other such as, like, jazz or anything. That never really tickled my fancy. Um, I did, even though I did it back some in high school. But um, I also took some lessons just to try to better self-improve myself uh, in the music field, um, even though I wasn't music major I felt obligated for how many years I'd done music to try to see how far I could get myself um, in and around you know work and my actual major and other classes to see how far I could go um, I have actually done music since fifth grade um, I started at my elementary school 
um, around the age most people typically start. Most people may start middle school, but um, I just started a year before that. But I've done it all the way up through high school and then continued into college. It was just kind of something that I felt took the stress away from my everyday um, load of classes, you know, whatever. And just kind of helped me calm down and relax for the evening and then maybe help me afterwards crack down on actual homework or whatever that I may have had on in other classes. So it was a nice, enjoyable thing for me to do. It was more of kind of a hobby type class. So That's kind of cool because as a major, I always felt like it was like a job that I wasn't getting paid for. So it was hard to enjoy it a lot. So <laughs> I yeah. I see why people stick with a hobby. Like, so it's less stress that way. <laughs> yeah. Um, like I said, uh, you get, with it being a hobby um, compared to whereas you felt it was a job. Um, yeah, we're around our friends, but you had to take it a little more serious than I probably would have had to. Um, even though I did have to step up and be kind of like a section leader, um, you know, later years in co at college, you know, as I became, you know, the, the senior of the band or whatever, my section, whatever, the oldest member, um, you got to, you have a sense of responsibility still to step up, to be able to do your part and help the under, the underlings, the underclassmen and stuff. But even still, I could enjoy it a little probably more than you could because you had the stress of, being graded hardcore for, for uh, your performances and practices and everything. So how many semesters did you take lessons? Uh, I think I took lessons three, maybe four. I want to say three semesters. I took lessons. Um, the first one um, I took lessons where I wasn't a music major. They never really forced me to do anything. Um, so I never did a jury my first semester. He, uh, our professor didn't, he told me that I didn't necessarily have to, or I wasn't a music major and he wasn't going to force me to. Um, but with the second and third one, uh, he was like, all right, you have a semester of lessons under your belt. You're going to do one. I was like, okay, well, this is going to suck a little bit, but, uh, cause where I wasn't a music major, it's like, okay, I have to actually grind and I don't really, didn't really know how to do that to prepare something like that, like you guys had already done. And I didn't really start this until I think my junior year. I don't think I started doing lessons until then. So you guys had already had quite a few years under your belt for doing lessons and being able to do a jury performance uh, for the final and stuff, as well as your prog uh, each year progression to see if you move on to the next year level classes and stuff in the field. So it was fun. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I learned a lot, even though some stuff still kind of went a little bit over my head. Um, but I wasn't in those classes. So a lot of the stuff I never really learned about. Uh, but he did try to teach me and I learned a, quite a lot more than I probably would have ever without doing lessons or anything like that. Even just being a regular band, you don't typically, I don't think, learn a lot of those terminologies and all that stuff relating to music. Yeah. Um, compared to what you would in an actual music class, like a theory class or a lesson. Um, so, but each, my second and third year, the jury pieces I did have to perform though, they were, t each one was tougher than the last. I will give it that. Um, and it put a lot of pressure on me, that's for sure. But in the end, uh, they all said I did phenomenal, uh, and yes, I was graded a little lighter than the majors because I wasn't a music major, but they still probably, I think they said they would, uh, would have given me an A or a really high B on both of them that I had to perform for. So in the end, I did, I surprised myself and I did a lot better than I thought I would ever do. So Juries are hard on a lot of people. Like I've seen people have panic attacks. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Um, I saw quite a few of those while waiting in line for my jury the day of, you know, all the jury finals. You just kind of sit there and kind of look around at your uh, peers that are, that were doing, have to do juries as well, whether they're music majors or not too. And 
just kind of look at each other and smile with this look on your face like oh crap we're gonna die but it's okay <laughs> we're gonna die together we'll, we'll all sink or swim together <laughs> yeah. yeah it was that was always crazy because you know like we're just sitting there just like oh gosh i'm next oh, gosh and then, and then somebody walk up like are you okay <laughs> how'd you do <laughs> <laughs> yeah not to mention uh even though we were in a, in a different room waiting and like warming up or whatever, depending on who was like, who was in the other room actually doing their jury, depending on what they were playing for an instrument, you could actually hear them. So if like you heard them mess up or do a really good part, uh, like a really hard part really well or something, I mean, you kind of got either really happy for them or you like, you felt the fear that they were feeling if they messed up, like, it was it was Ooh. that real <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah it was it was definitely something that you kind of go through as a group even though you're on your own for that performance so yeah i remember yeah i remember talking to people that i never talked to during the year during that jury line like i was just like hey how you doing <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah never talked to you before but i feel you <laughs> <laughs> yep that's a sink or swim feeling together you just kind of go with it and try to somewhat help each other through it and then you finally finish your jury and you just kind of want to run back to your room and cry because <laughs> it's over so oh i did that like <laughs> like i remember specifically after my senior asado hearing i just i just cried because I was like, it's over. I did it. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> so. Yeah, I definitely feel like uh, the hearings that you guys had to do were a little harder. Because it wasn't just like one piece that you had on lessons, Jerry. It was this whole montage of uh, pieces that you had to perform, whether it was solo or with some random friends that you got to join you or whatever. And that's definitely a lot more stressful. Uh, I could definitely see that stress being put on a lot of you, the actual music majors that I knew. So, yeah, the senior recital hearing was forty minutes. So. <laughs> yeah, versus a you know, lessons jury that's like three minutes tops, maybe. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely was, a lot. I remember sitting down at the drum set to play that piece and I just like took a second and just like slumped over and just like because <laughs> I was just like yeah. I was I got I was just tired <laughs> this, is, this is stressful <laughs> <laughs> but like most of the time they were all super helpful you know they tried not to make you feel that way <laughs> just like which yeah, that's that's one thing I really enjoyed. Uh, even though our university was small, um, or on the smaller side, it actually did help a lot that all the music professors were such friendly, kind people. They were so yeah, they expected a lot out of you. Um, even if you know, if, even if where I wasn't a music major, um, my professor that I did lessons with, he knew my skill level, so he still expected a great amount out of me for uh, my performing and stuff um but so even though they expect a, a lot out of you um they'll still help you as long as you're willing to put forth the effort and they're just such kind people I, they're they're people that i'll remember probably for the rest of my life i agree such a gr great a great group of people <laughs> what do you want to talk about now <laughs> Oh no, this has actually been a quite enjoyable conversation. <laughs> yeah. I've actually enjoyed this. Yeah. It's it's not bad once you like get a flow, but sometimes it's really hard to like keep the flow. <laughs> and I'm like Yeah. Uh let's see here. Hmm. What do what would you say you preferred more? Uh marching, concert or jazz or what? At the time, or solo ense ensemble. At the time, mm, 
at the time, I think I liked jazz and concert. But I really miss marching band. Like, I miss, like, the hype of, like, the music. And I, I just miss playing it. Like, I was really mm-hmm. out of shape in college. So I didn't really like marching. <laughs> but <laughs> um, I, I, I do miss it, though. Like, I, I really miss marching. I miss the music because it was, like, easy and it was just chill. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I really like playing band. solo stuff, though. Yeah, it gives you kind of a more self-importance. Like, I own this, especially if you do a really good job with a solo piece. Um, you, you you can literally be like, it was nobody else. It was all me. I had the only thing to do with this, and I killed it. I aced it. And you can walk around big and tall. Best feeling, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like when you ace the juries, you know. <laughs> Best feeling. You walk out of there, and then when you get back to your room, then you can cry, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, I probably preferred concert more. Um, I found the music to be a little more entertaining. Um, plus, the pieces were longer, so if you really enjoyed one piece, you got a little more time playing it than just you know like a minute and a half or whatever, like you would for like a, mar- a marching piece typically. Um, but also I did enjoy marching, not as much in college because we never competed. That's one of the main things I enjoyed it so much back in high school, um, is the competitions that, that had such a certain thrill aspect to it that made it so much fun. But because of the fact, I think that we didn't compete, we never took it too seriously. Um, neither did our professor. Like, he did, but he didn't. Um, he was more of a concert man anyway. Yeah. Concert and jazz, um, which was really nice for marching band. Because of that, we were able to actually goof around and have a lot of fun playing all the music, whether it be the actual field show that we were doing or just goofing around, dancing in the stands, playing stand tunes, you know. We were actually we had a lot of freedom still doing performing that stuff, and it was it was a lot of fun, especially with the uh, the crowd we had. Yeah. So. It was it was nice. <laughs> I'll say the the reason I probably think that way is because I played snare drum and marching band, so I was more involved than in concert band, where a lot of times we were just kind of hanging back because <laughs> the piece that call for a lot of. <laughs> percussion heavy stuff and that happened a lot but i do i know we didn't have a big percussion section in concert band so that's probably why but i mean there are some pieces like godzilla eats las vegas where like i was super involved and then there's pieces like hammersmith i i didn't like hammersmith (laughs) <laughs> you might have like yeah you might have had like two measures for like 80 yeah. 80 measures that you actually yeah. played so like concert band for like me was every like measure count and rest like the whole time <laughs> well, that's the best part though count and rest <laughs> nothing beats count and rest especially when you get lost in practice and you're <laughs> the, the director like, just looks at you like <laughs> Your director's just like this, trying to get your attention. You're just zoned out, trying to count. I'm just like, I forgot what number I was on. <laughs> and then you got to start, restart over, go back to whatever big number or letter, depending on the, what, whatever the composer used, and start from there. <laughs> yeah. It would get to the point where I just listen for like, like you to play something or like the the woodwinds to play something and they're like oh it's that man yeah just, okay <laughs> just like a certain audio cue yeah that you kind of remembered what part you were at or whatever yeah um that it's kind of hard to do that well it's kind of hard not to do that um you're not technically supposed to according to you know your the, every direct band director and stuff you're supposed to actually count not listen for audio cues but Honestly, that kind of helps a lot, too, because me personally, I don't know most people, it might work, this might be for you as well, 
but when I'm not playing, I tend to get into the music a little bit, and I might lose uh, lose count. Oh yeah. Um. So audio cues might actually they they help they helped me a lot. I'll, I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, I use them too. quite a lot, not just counting. So. Me too. They're nice. Oh oh oh! I know what we can talk about. Let's talk about the musical we did. Ooh. That yeah. was a very interesting, interesting musical choice. Uh, very popular, based off of a very popular show, but probably way more difficult than I ever anticipated that being. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun, though. It was very fun, but very difficult. It was fun at the end. Um, and we're back. <laughs> hey. okay. I was so nervous. I was like, please, please save that recording. Okay. We're good, though. It is still recording. <laughs> but it was probably by far one of the most difficult, not so much time signature, but key signatures that I've, I've personally had to play, uh, play on trumpet. Um, that was definitely a lot of sharps and accidentals thrown in there, which I did not necessarily appreciate. But, <laughs> but it was tough, but... Uh, I think we honestly pulled it off quite well, and it was pretty fun to actually do with the uh, the theater group that it we had really on campus. Fun. It it was hard to adjust to at the beginning. It was like, oh my gosh, but it 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 ended up being really fun. <laughs> yeah, um, we had a good group that was chosen for uh, the performance and stuff to uh, to play it and everything. And like you said, the the theater group did a phenomenal job actually acting all the scenes out and everything. Um, and they all had a, we all had a good laugh overall on funny parts. Uh, we tried not to pay attention to them because we knew we were going to bust out laughing and whatnot. Cause we knew what to expect from all the practices. And we, we knew uh, we couldn't turn around and watch because even though we knew what was going on and we wanted to, cause you know, it was entertaining to us, but you know, you got to keep that professional, composure while you're in a performance which is sometimes difficult to do but we managed to do it somehow (laughs) yeah like that the opening piece was in like g flat major they were pretty off the wall key signatures that normally you wouldn't see in most pieces at least not the not most typical pieces Unless you have a perf- band director that just absolutely hates your guts and is like, here, have something with 10 sharps or 10 flats <laughs> or both. Yeah. And I kept tripping up over the C flat because that's, 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 that's B, right? And I kept tripping yeah. up over it. And <laughs> I think I kept having – see, most of, the, most of the trumpet stuff was actually fairly low because of Char- where it's Charlie Brown. Nothing for really any of the instruments, I don't think, were very high on the uh, – octaves octave range or anything um so most of trumpet stuff was typically on the staff uh no higher than i guess the top of the staff from what i recall but a couple of the notes that tripped me up were like accidentals towards the bottom of the staff because it's not stuff you see like f flat it's an e why just write e for the love of god (laughs) i never understood why they did that like just just put the note it's supposed to be on there don't put f flat <laughs> but that's just me <laughs> i kept tripping up too I, I tripped up a lot over this musical but like one one thing that i hadn't really seen before was the music was just like written out time so it didn't have like specific parts for like snare drum and stuff it was just like marked time so like, yeah i had to make up my own thing and i was just like i i, I wasn't i was never really very good at that and and so I was just like, what do I do? <laughs> yeah, and being in percussion though for that musical, uh, you guys had to do time a lot of sound effects or whatever as well, didn't you? Yeah. yeah so that that was. So yeah, you you actually had to watch the play so you could time it. Um, but yeah, yeah like, I watch was the like play and the director punch. as well. Like, I was, like, the sound effect for, like, a push. And then, like, when the leaf fell, I had, like, a a whistle, like, a slide whistle that was the yeah. leaf. 
Like it was so fun, though. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what happens when you uh, get to play music for uh, very strange, difficult music for a very fun and entertaining uh, animated musical. Yeah. It was... I mean, nothing, be- nothing beats a good old classic Charlie Brown. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they've done like a revised f- version of that play, like that musical, and apparently the music's easier. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, can we go so back you... in time and take that? <laughs> so us, you give please? us the old one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give us the one for like the world renowned professionals to play. I'm pretty but sure you, you give the people like after <laughs> drum set. Like that's it, there's a full on drum set part for the new one. I'm pretty sure, and I'm like, well, that's like perfect for you. <laughs> that would have been your dream come true. Everything all like, in one little spot. <laughs> oh my gosh, I had like a kick drum, a snare, and a hi hat, but I also had like a, a stylophone. My Siri turned you? on. I had a xylophone, a bell kit, one timpani, or timpano, if we're trying to be technical here. Um, <laughs> like a, a bicorn, a bicycle horn, yeah, uh, a yeah, slide whistle. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, yeah, so you, you had like the entire pit for percussion section, and then we were all crammed in this like two foot, squ- uh, two square foot. <laughs> yeah like area <laughs> all because you had like all this crap that you had to have I know. <laughs> half of it you used like once for like half yeah. a second and then you didn't use it again yeah and the, here we are just the slide okay, whistle I'm ready to play my trumpet <laughs> <laughs> the timpani was timpano excuse me the timpano was used like <laughs> twice one was in a piece and the other was like a sound effect <laughs> And it's like this giant drum just sitting back there. <laughs> I had chimes too. I had the tri- the bar chimes. I'm I'm pretty sure I had those. Yeah, I think the only I thing you really, them. I think the only thing you really didn't have were like the quads, the other timpanis, obviously, because you only needed like the one, and then like the bells and like the rest of like the xylophone related instruments i didn't have a marimba i had i'm i had yeah i had a xylophone a vibraphone and a bell kit so i had i I just didn't have a marimba (laughs) i don't recall you having used this uh vibraphone for that it was in a couple of pieces yeah okay sometimes i remember using it for like the dreaming sound effect because I had the motor on. And was just... uh, yeah, made it all wavy and <laughs> dreamlike. <It's> cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm really proud yeah, of that. <laughs> that was a very tough piece, and we didn't have a whole lot of time to even pull that off either, and we yeah. still managed to do it. Yeah. And everybody, everybody that attended all the shows said that they really enjoyed it. They loved it. I've, I even heard a couple people say they loved all your sound effects, a bunch of your sound effects that went along with the stuff. <laughs> yes. So you got, you you were about the only person in the entire little pit section that we had that everybody people were able to pick out because I mean you you were the only yeah. one that had memorable parts. Yeah. Man, so. there's some good pictures of me that somebody took during that. Like I'm just sitting there like. Like, yeah, well, there I'm were quite a few faces. <laughs> well, there were quite a few parts that we kind of all just sat there, you know, just bored because some. I mean, the rest of us, other than you, didn't necessarily play unless it was like in between scenes, whereas yeah. you had stuff in between scenes and during scenes. But during scenes were just like your little action, your action pack noises, so. Yeah, we had a lot of fun though doing that. It was, it was a change of pace. And I remember he told us, he uh, when he asked those of us he wanted who, he wanted uh, to do it, we all just kind of looked at each other like, oh crap, this might actually be difficult. Because I'm pretty yeah. sure he told us it was going to be di- pretty difficult too. We all just kind of just stared at each other like, 
oh crap, this is gonna suck. <laughs> and it it did a little bit, but we got through it and we actually enjoyed it. Yeah. So it yeah, it was extremely hard at first, but it was also extremely rewarding once it was finished and once we got to the actual shows, it was like, okay, this is this is, good. <laughs> this is why I've been so aggravated for two weeks. Well, whatever. I don't even remember how long it was we rehearsed. We rehearsed. Yeah. So, and that was another thing too, like with those of you who are actually music majors uh, performing that, which I think like all of you, but me doing the perform- musical performance for the band part was actually a music major. Um, it was, it's actually good. It was actually a good experience for you guys to be able to do a musical on top of just, you know, besides just doing marching concert or oh, jazz, yeah. you know, the typical main three, well, four, if you count solo and ensemble as well um, for that solo experience. But the musical part actually definitely added a lot more to it. Do you have anything else you want to add? Or we can close it here? Yeah, just one thing. Uh, Really, uh, whether you've done music for, uh, you know, most of your life or all your life or are just learning to pick up an instrument and learn to play it or want to learn multiple instruments, I say go for it and definitely keep it up. It's something that's... I. I believe and many others as well believe to be very enjoyable, whether it's a pastime or a job or both. Um, just keep at it and go from there and enjoy life in the music world. Well, thank you for being on. Well, thank you for having me. It's, it's, it's been quite enjoyable. <laughs> and that is all for today's episode. Thank you so much for listening and thank you, Matt, for being on. I will see you guys in two weeks with another episode. This has been Teach Talk with the Fine Arts. (laughs) 